Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. One of you asked me recently in the comments to do something about Ivo Pogorelich. And I said to myself, you know, he was almost, no one talks about him much anymore, do we? I mean, he kind of flamed out in the 90s or there thereabouts and tried to make a comeback fairly recently, and it wasn't terribly successful. But he's been out there. He's been out there teaching and doing whatever he does. Um, apparently, um, he, he took a, some time off after his wife passed away. And uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, he had sort of a, a, an artistic burnout moment. And lots of artists do. And actually, it was nice of him to stop because now that we know when he came back, um, you know, he probably should have stayed stopped. But, you know, we'll see what happens. In any case, his, his legacy consists primarily of the 14 CDs that he recorded for a Deutsche Grammophon. And here they are in this handy box. Um, I don't know if it's still available or not. Probably not. But these are his complete DG recordings. So we could talk about them. And there, of course, is this wonderful photo back in the days when he was, you know, a little, you know, stud muffin or something like that. You know, a word to some of the more recent artists who are capitalizing on their youth and good looks. Now he kind of looks like a crew cutted Alexis Weissenberg. Ha <laughs> ha! See how far that gets him in his career. No, seriously, though. Um, he was a remarkable artist, at least at the time these were recorded, um, a very iconoclastic artist. I mean, he, he did things that no one else did, and sometimes he got away with them, and sometimes he didn't. So, so let's just take a look and see what's in here, and we shall go through it chunk by chunk, and we'll see. First, oh, Chopin recital. This is how he burst upon the scene with the second piano sonata, um, a very free and fun, enjoyable performance in the prelude in C-sharp minor and the scherzo in C-sharp minor and a nocturne and a couple, three etudes, uh, an interesting selection where he is typically freewheeling and people either love it or hate it. He was almost impossible to criticize in some senses because because, you know, he was one of those artists who just sort of internalized everything and did whatever he felt like and, and you know, and let the chips fall where they may. So he did have a following. He had something of a cult following. I guess they all look like Alexis Weissenberg now, too. Mm -hmm. But there you have it. Um, so the Chopin thing was really cool. Then we have the Beethoven Sonata Opus uh, 111. And the uh, Chopin Symphonic, Chopin, Schumann, Symphonic Etudes, and uh, the Toccata in C Major. Uh, well, the Toccata is really, is really lovely. It's dynamite. The Symphonic Etudes are fun because he differentiates them very well. The Beethoven, well, people may have some issues with the Arietta, which gets pulled and stretched and, 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 and hoojied with a little bit much. But, you know, like I said, he does what he does. Then we have concerti. Well, some concerti. The Chopin Second Piano Concerto of the Polonaise in F sharp minor. Okay, the concerto is really noteworthy for an absolutely gorgeous central movement. That beautiful larghetto is it's really it's really something. It's scrumptious. Elsewhere, there are better versions of the outer movements, I think, but he's got Claudio Abbato and the Chicago Symphony. I mean, there are no slouches. And the Polonaise is, is a good one. It's a very good performance of the Polonaise. Then we have, ah, yes. This is possibly his greatest ever recording. I mean, it may well be. It's the one that everybody still talks about. Ravel Gaspard de la Nuit. One of the, one of the great recordings of Gaspard. Just, I mean, it's such a perverse piece anyway. It's as weird and eccentric as you can as you can get musically, and he he really has a good time with it. It's 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 a thrilling performance, full of personal personal touches, particularly Gibet, you know, with its perpetual little tone, you know, going through it and whatnot. It's just lovely. And then we've got uh, let's see, what's this thing? Oh yeah, the Prokofiev Six Sonata, another great performance, largely because you know Prokofiev is steely and rhythmic. And, and within that framework, um, he's really able to do quite a lot with the music. And I, it's, it's, it's very, very enjoyable. That was a great record. And everybody sort of agrees on that. That was the one that I think really sort of cemented his reputation as eccentric but great, as opposed to just eccentric. You know what I mean? 
Then we've got the Tchaikovsky First Piano Concerto with Abato again in the LSO. Oh, he monkeys around with it all over the place. I mean, you know, Abato did this with Argerich, of course, and that was just amazing. It's kind of the reference recording of the Tchaikovsky First Piano Concerto. And so to have this version out there, it's it, 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 it's just better. There's just better. I really believe that. And I think that um, for all of his individuality, it it sometimes works against the music because it's a piece that it needs to move. You know what I mean? You can't just, just, you know, you know, you know. We don't have to go through that, do we? No, okay. Bach, English Suites. Now, nobody expected him to do the English Suites well. One of the fascinating things about Bach, of course, is that it works no matter what you do with it or how you play it or, well, most of the time. You know what I mean. For all that Bach is Bach, you know, Bach, it really accepts a tremendous range of interpretation and very romanticized interpretation. These are lovely performances of the English Suites. They really are. They are quite lovely, and I, I enjoy them very much. The Sarah Bands are really, you know, kind of slow and other things are zippy and I, I don't know. It worked really well. Chopin Preludes. Ah, oh, the Chopin Preludes. Oh, these are so beautiful. I love the Chopin Preludes. Now, there are great sets of Chopin Preludes, specifically Moravets, Argerich, Arau. I mean, those are three. I can just off the top of my head. Um, is this up there? Well, I don't think so. I don't think it's quite up there. I mean, again, it's it's all a question of how much you're willing to tolerate in terms of interpretive um, interpretive excess or what is excess indulgence. Let us just say. But again, uh, he's very confident in everything that he does, and a lot of the a lot of the, the the way that you know artists who are a little eccentric get away with it is also being so technically accomplished and and totally convinced of their own insanity which is not to say inanity, um, that they just put it over very, very well with complete conviction. And he certainly does here. I mean, when you're listening to them, sometimes you get the sense, even though you feel it's like wrong, that it just can't be done any other way. List, Sonata, Scriabin, Sonata number two, the Sonata Fantasy. This is a great record, I think. I think this is really fun. I mean, the list is, is, is slamming and exciting, and it's got, oh my God, 13, 13 separate tracks on this disc, okay? Um, I never listened to this on headphones. Probably there's like a break between each one that would drive me insane, but it's fine on CD. And the, the Scriabin is beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's just beautiful and sexy. It's terrific. Um, this was the disc you made that I hated most of all. I think of all of them. Uh, oh goodness, Haydn, two piano sonatas, just two Haydn piano sonatas. And the A flat sonata, the D major that he stretched out to just, 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 just I, I, unconscionable lengths. This was so bizarre. Um, but again, I mean, he, he was totally, I was excited that, it, you know, a virtuoso like this would do Haydn sonatas, you know, because when are you going to see that? You know, I mean, because Haydn wasn't done so much. This was in 1992. And, you know, there were the specialist people, my light's blinking. Oh, well. And, 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 and Haydn was, uh, not something that you think he would do. I mean, you got to give him credit. You have to give him credit for having this enormously broad repertoire, really. And and and, but no. <laughs> After giving him credit for the repertoire, I don't have to give him credit for what he does with it. Scarlatti sonatas. Some are fabulous. Some are just plain weird. I mean, he could really play Scarlatti, and I love to hear Scarlatti on the piano, and I love to hear what people will do with it. Um, I, I get the sense, actually, listening to some of these that what he really lacked was a sense of humor. You know, he, 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 when, you're, when you're bizarre, you have to take yourself terribly seriously. Um, when you're a genius, you can take yourself bizarrely and not so seriously. You know what I mean? He, he, he's, he's working a little too hard in some of these pieces. Some of them are just brilliant. You know, you, you listen to them, take them on a case-by-case -case basis. Brahms. Okay, the Capriccio in F sharp minor, Intermezzo in A major, the Rhapsodies, Opus 79, and the Intermezzi, Opus 117, um, hit and miss. I, there are always beautiful moments in Pogorelich performances. There really, really are. Um, I, I, think, I think the first Rhapsody, the Agitato, goes really well. Um, as far as the Intermezzi, I like number two. I mean, because number two, you know, gives you a lot 
a lot of lot to play with. It's marked Andante non troppo e con molto espressione. He's asking for trouble, and Pogorelli gives it to him. So that's really okay. Um, and elsewhere, you know, there's just moments where you're you're transfixed, and other moments where you're just going. Mm -hmm. Okay, pictures in an exhibition in the Ravel, Vals Noble et Sentimental, another one of his good ones. It really is. I mean, pictures in an exhibition, as you know, can be subject to all kinds of manipulations and still come out well because it has so much basic contrast and color and character and because it's so unpianistic. I mean, you know, you can really, you can really play with it a little bit and um, this works really quite well. Um, and the, the Ravel is beautiful. Ravel is just beautiful. That's another work where it's not so well known. You know, it, it, it could use some fantasy, and he's got plenty of fantasy. No question about that. Uh, Mozart piano sonatas and the Fantasia in D minor, Kershaw 379. Also, also Kershaw 385G. <clears throat> All those Kershaws flying around. So you get this sonata number five in G major and number 11 in A major with the Rondo a la Turca at the end. Um, that's fun. It really is fun, but I don't think as a Mozart player, you know, he needed to, you know, anyone was going to go crazy. And then we have Chopin for scherzos. Well, okay. Um, I like these. They're exciting. They're characterful. They're full of pizzazz. Um, this was recorded when? 1998. And it was the last thing he did for DG. I mean, his wife, I think, passed away in 1996. And he was uh, somewhere around there. Um, and he was he was on on his way out. So, um, what, what what can we say? Uh, you know, I I respect the guy. I admire what he did um, when he did it. I think he was probably right to stop when he did. Um, it seems like it seems like he was um, a meteor that you know flashed through the sky and then landed. But you're going to find a lot of characterful music making in here. Some very eccentric and individualist decisions, individualistic decisions, um, along with some just tremendous stuff. And of course, you got to hear the, the Prokofiev Ravel disc. That's just splendid. Also, Liszt's Scriabin, I think, is really worth hearing. Um, and, and possibly the pictures at an exhibition. And that would probably give you the best of him overall overall uh, but but there's something he, there's something here in just about everything he did I mean he was a worthy artist somebody who was exciting you never knew what you were going to get it was fun to wait and hear what was going to come ignore the height and, and otherwise uh, yeah so if you can find this stuff by all means go for it but focus on those ones that I mentioned you know the Ravel Prokofiev pictures in an exhibition and List and Scriabin, and you'll have some really, really delightful discs that you can sink your teeth into, especially if you know the music well. Yeah, you know, that's 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 the way to go for it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.